we will move on with the uh, uh, next presentation uh, will be the keynote speak uh, done by Miss Nicole Kelly uh, to move on she is from uh, United States of America uh, Miss Nicole Kelly is the CEO of Infinite Inspiration and host of Consciousness Marketing podcast. She is best known for her book How to Measure Social Media and her supporting work in 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 setting in setting industry standards for how return on investment from digital marketing is measured and valued within organizations. She has 17 years of marketing experience that includes designing marketing programs for fortune 1000 brands like Sherwin Williams, Humana and Lexus Nevis to small business entrepreneurs including the franchises of Science by Tomorrow. After experiencing three minor strokes from the hamster wheel of success and a passion for ROI, she is back to set the record straight. ROI is not the bottom line. She is determined to raise the bar of consciousness for the entire marketing industry so we can accelerate a global awakening of consciousness that will liberate humanity from itself. So we will move on with the with our speaker, Miss Nicola Kelly. It's my pleasure in welcoming you for this uh, session and the stage is yours. You can start your session, even please. Heard of. And many of the tips that we're giving in marketing are really driven around how do you increase profit? How do you increase conversion rates? How do you make more money and do it at a cost efficient way? And what I'm here to talk about is how you can growth hack in a little different way by focusing on what we call conscious marketing. The reason that I'm here talking about this topic is because I realized after having these three minor strokes and facing my own mortality and looking at myself and saying, wow, like, why am I here? How did I end up on a planet with seven and a half billion people? And what have I been doing with my life? And what is my purpose? I realized that I was part of the problem. I was in marketing and had really focused my entire career on return investment and wrote the book, How to Measure Social Media. I was on the speaking circuit. I was running a multi-million dollar agency. And, and everything that I was doing was putting me on this hamster wheel of success focused on making more money. And I'd simply offer that what I've learned since having these three minor strokes and um, and I ultimately had a near-death experience where um, I came and, and got to meet the infinite creator, whatever your belief systems are. I would say that I think that as marketers, we might have lost sight of our purpose. We've been so focused on return and on investment that we forgot that we're here for a much grander purpose. And I'll say that return on investment is important. It's absolutely critical for us to run successful businesses that can stay in business, but there is a bigger picture. Our true purpose as marketers is to inspire humanity to step into its full potential for the entire human species. There is an evolution that is happening and we as humans are waking up and we're looking around and we're saying, wait a second, is this what life is all about? Am I here to buy more things? Am I here to go to work every day on this hamster wheel? What am I really here to do? And we as marketers have this unique opportunity because we actually are the message. We control every screen that consumers around the world touch. We're in every home, we're in every car, we're in every office. And, and people are looking to us for inspiration and what we've been delivering them are ads that tell them to buy more things that they don't need. And so I offer to you as a marketer that what if we actually were responsible for helping to wake up an entire planet to our true potential? We have access to one of the most powerful tools our planet has available. 
as you can see in this example, this was the, the release of the iPhone 5. This is not, you know, just when iPhone first came out. This was the iPhone 5, and you see people lining up in order to buy products. And why? Because we're in every device. We're on every computer screen. We are in the lives of every human on this planet who has access to the internet, which is a vast amount of potential for us. And as we look at these channels and we look at what we can do, what if we started to think about how we could actually start to inspire humanity, how we could tell people that everything that is great about them so that when they leave, they actually feel more inspired than when we left or than when they came. Marketing celebrates our heroes. You know, this is an ad from Gatorade that focuses on the, uh, the Olympics. And it says, you know, hey, if you're, if you're a professional athlete and you're standing up for your country, then this is what it looks like to be a hero. And if you look at, at all of the uh, media that's out there, we have many heroes. We celebrate uh, those who are in service, firefighters, policemen. We celebrate business leaders. We celebrate governmental leaders, political leaders. We celebrate religious leaders. We consider all of these people our heroes. And then we tell the story in a way that also glamorizes our villains. All of the stories in the hero's journey, which is one of the quintessential storytelling uh, pieces that has been used in marketing, which is that we have a hero and we have a villain. And then third piece is that we have a victim. And instead of looking at this in terms of, you know, one person is all of these people are ultimately good. We look at it as these heroes are our heroes and these villains are awful people that must be, you know, taken out and they must be destroyed by our he heroes. But then you see in our advertisements that we're also glamorizing the people that we're saying are bad, if you will. And then I'll also say that marketing shames our victims. You know, this is an ad that was to, to get people to stop speeding, and yet it's showing physical abuse in a way that, you know, it's not glorifying the abuse, but it's completely irrelevant to the message and unnecessary. And as we look at consciousness and how the conscious consumer is rising, this type of advertising simply is no longer tolerated. We're seeing a shift of what the consumer wants from us. We're evolving as a planet, as a species, and as individuals. There is a change that is coming and that is happening across the planet. And we are waking up and saying, like I said, why am I here? How did I end up on a planet with seven and a half billion people? And what does this mean about how I live my life, how I work, and how I purchase? And as we evolve, you're going to see that we are at the tipping point of a conscious awakening for our entire planet. And as marketers, this is one that, interestingly enough, where we're normally ahead of the game, marketers are behind the game when it comes to conscious evolution. But that can change. As we awaken consciousness, it's unlocking our superpowers. My personal story is that you know, after I had these minor strokes and I started this process of self-discovery of wondering who I am and wanting to get really clear and honest with myself, and I started, um, I started this whole journey of consciousness where I was removing all of the ego layers and I was, you know, changing my life from my personal life to my job and stripping everything away and saying, who am I really? I also learned that humans are capable of far more than we give ourselves credit for. I've learned that for myself, for example, I also have a quantum healing ability, which means that I can, I can heal people with my hands. It's, it's a strange thing that I never would have thought was possible five years ago. But today I can tell you that I have, I have helped many groups of people transcend their emotional responses, their mental responses, their physical responses, and their spiritual responses simply by doing something as simple as conducting energy with my hands. And so I offer to you that the other reason that we look at consciousness is because we are more than this physical corporal body. We are here and we have abilities. And the only way to unlock them is to unlock consciousness. And this is the one gift that we can't fake. 
And with it, we're bringing a new kind of consumer. So say hello to the conscious consumer. This is a trend that has been happening. The first articles that I found started in 2010 talking about the conscious consumer. And now we're at a whole new point in humanity where it's simply no longer tolerable not to have a social good mission. This picture is from Burning Man, which is an event that happens in August in a remote desert in Nevada. And 70,000 people come together and they build an entire city with no water, no electricity, there's absolutely nothing there. And they build an entire city, they build art displays, they bring in food, they bring in water, all so that they can essentially have this amazing celebration of humanity for a week and they party and they dress up in costumes. But here's the thing, no brands are allowed. This is an event where 70,000 consumers have come together and said no. We don't want to talk to brands. This is about us discovering who we are. And that's one of many events that are happening like this across the world. The conscious consumer is different. You know, this audience in particular, and I'm sorry, this um, slide is a little cut off. I'll, I'll fix it when we send it back out to you guys. But this consumer is willing to to change the way they buy. This Echo House in Chicago is one of the most environmentally green houses uh, in all of Chicago. And we're seeing that conscious consumers are using their purchasing power to buy from conscious companies and conscious products. And it's not just a few people. Unilever did a study that showed that 33% of consumers are now choosing to buy from brands they believe are doing social or environmental good. And that's just the bottom. That's like the, the minimum at this point. 84% of consumers globally back in 2015, only two years ago, said that they are seeking out responsible products whenever possible. But 80%, 81% said that there weren't, as, there weren't enough products to meet their demands. However, 6% said that they would, they would be willing to borrow or share products rather than buy new ones. So this is a new trend where our marketing has told people, buy, 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 replace, replace, this, con this um, disposable form of consumerism. People are changing their minds and they're saying, no, we actually would rather consume consciously just like we would rather purchase con consciously. 57% said they would pr even purchase a product of lesser quality if it was a conscious company. That's saying something. These consumers are willing to take a lower product for a social good mission, and this is something that we need to start paying attention to. And with the rise of the conscious consumer, we have the rise of the conscious company. So these are companies who are mission-driven, and Dr. Bronner's is my absolute favorite example. This is a company that sells cleaning detergents, um, soaps, and, and other you know, household products that are all chemical-free. They're consciously created. They, they're safe for our pets and our children. And the interesting thing about Dr. Bronner's is that they actually participate in Burning Man which is this event that no brands are allowed to participate in. But what Dr. Bronner's does is they come in and they bring in a shower, which when you've been in the desert for a week and a half with no showers, it is a gift that is very welcomed by participants. And people line up and they come into these showers and they get a shower from Dr. Bronner's and they call the camp different things. Like the year I went, it was called Reformation and they're very creative. And as much as this event does not allow any brands to participate. Dr. Bronner's is celebrated as a, a company who has come and participates in this community in a meaningful way. And they're celebrated by, by attendees as do, many of them leave buying Dr. Bronner's. Why? Because they actually showed that they cared. And they didn't do it from a point of, I'm going to show you an advertisement. They said, oh, I'm coming, and I'm going to give you something of value. And that is the difference of a conscious company. 
I took a look at Conscious Company Media, which is a company that was recently started by Aaron Kahlo, who used to run the Online Marketing Institute. You're seeing a shift as marketers are now starting to shift into consciousness. You're also seeing that we're starting companies. And he said that a conscious company takes all stakeholders into account in its operations, decisions, and strategies. And they have a higher purpose beyond profit. So the first criteria of a conscious company is that they're mission driven. It means that they're in business to do good on the planet. And then it extends beyond there. It extends into how companies treat their employees, how they treat their, their customers, and also how they treat the planet, how they treat animals. All of this is coming into play, place where it used to be that companies, as long as they were profitable and big, if you will, the billion dollar companies, we turned a blind eye to the impact that they had on the planet. And I would say that those days are definitely over. And now we're at an interesting time because as the conscious consumer rises and the conscious company rises, now the world is ready for the conscious marketer. And the conscious marketer thinks differently, acts differently, and ultimately creates campaigns differently. And so as you've been listening to all of these tips today, wonderful tips, and as you'll hear them later, I ask that you look at them and you say, this is a great tool. How can I consciously use it? Conscious marketing is working with a high level of awareness, care, and diligence for the indirect and direct impact marketing programs have. We create with the intention of leaving a positive trace behind within our lifetime. This is not about creating and hoping that something happens three or four generations down the line. No, this is saying, I can have an impact now, and I'm going to do something about it. And all it takes is that you're just going to need one superpower. We all have them. Like I said, my superpower is that I have access to quantum healing. Some of you may have access to uh, a variety of different things from seeing energy to being able to tap into information and channel information to receive information in. There are superpowers emerging that people are not talking about. This is like held beneath the surface. But when you start talking to people who have a high level of consciousness and you ask them what their superpower is, they might just blow your mind with something that you didn't even know was possible. And so as you look to be a conscious marketer, this is the one thing that can't be faked. You have to clear your ego. You have to clear the story of who you are. And you have to start looking at what it is you are here to do. And when you receive your purpose, you also unlock your superpower. The second piece is that you have to accept your mission. We are all here for a mission. For example, my mission is to help a billion people heal by 2020. And I had to accept that mission and look at it and reconcile how does this mission of healing fit into my life as a marketer? I was a corporate marketer for 17 years, as you heard. I've worked with Fortune 1,000 brands most of my career. And as I looked, I was like, what does this healing mean? And, and how does this fit into anything? It doesn't make sense to me. What I realized is that I'm here to help marketers wake up to their true selves so that we can be the mission. We can be the message. We have the ability to truly accelerate a conscious awakening if we so choose. And in my example, I am here to help marketers and I'm also here to help the planet. And as I do that, I offer free quantum healings every month and that is my gift to humanity. And ultimately, our mission is to inspire humanity to step into our full potential, to realize that we're more than our houses, our families, our things. We're here for a purpose. And the purpose of why we're here is to actually live in harmony and balance on our planet, to use our resources wisely, and to help our children understand that they are infinite beings with infinite potential as well. Conscious marketers don't glamorize villains. And we don't shame victims. In fact, it's a little different. We don't do any of those things. We actually don't even talk about the villains and the victims. Why? Because as much as it's a good story to tell where you have a hero rising above and, and um, conquering over a villain and that they're saving that victim, 
what it does is it creates villains and victims in our own lives. When every TV show you turn on, every movie, every radio, every song on the radio, every ad talks about fear-based language and tells us that we need to protect ourselves, what we end up doing is we shut ourselves off to the true nature of humanity, which is to help each other, which is to love each other unconditionally. And so conscious marketers are removing the hero, villain, victim story, and we're focusing on telling the story of real life heroes, like my friend Jason King, who's using cryptocurrency donations to feed and house the homeless. He started an organization called Unsung, where they take the food that normally would be thrown away in restaurants, but is perfectly good and servable food. And he takes it and he packages it and he sends it to the homeless. And now he recently, with the Satoshi Forest Project, raised 100, I think it was $89,000 to purchase nine acres in Florida, where he's actually going to build homes for the homeless as well. This is conscious business meeting conscious reality. We also focus on telling stories of where humans are helping humans. We're focusing on, on our true potential as humanity, which is that we're here to help each other. We're here to support each other. That is our true nature. This was illustrated clearly in the documentary I Am, which was um, put out on Netflix by Tom Shadiak. You can also find it online. And the research is clear. Humans are not here to fight against each other. We're not here to conquer each other. We're here to help each other, to support each other, and to love each other. Conscious marketers choose language that is, cre is, is it's creating a specific emotion. So what this means is that our words matter. As we look at the language that we're using in our advertising and in our commercials and videos and, and social media content, we're very specific about the language that we choose. And here's why. Consider that you used the words, this slide says choose joy, but consider you selected choose love instead. When you think about love, you probably think, oh yeah, like that's gonna get people to feel love in their heart. They're gonna feel good when they see the word love. But if you understand dynamics of the human mind and the human construct of how we process emotions, then you know that when you say the word love, it really depends on what my personal story is with love. If I am in a conscious partnership with my soulmate, then you say choose love and my heart opens and I feel amazing and I'm grateful for that advertisement. But if I haven't found that partner that that I've been waiting for, or I recently went through a breakup, or maybe I'm going through a divorce, or I haven't felt love from my family, then when you say love, what you actually are doing is bringing up all of the emotions of my trauma. And we haven't been conscious about that. And so I would offer that there is specific language that when you use it, it has, it has a repeatable response of emotion. So for example, choose joy. By using the word joy, joy is a, a feeling and an emotion that I feel, and I can only feel it in a positive setting. So when you say joy, I remember joy, and you can't feel joy and pain at the same time, but you absolutely can feel love and pain at the same time. So really look at your language and choose language that is going to create an emotion at the end that is better than when someone started. Whether it's an ad or it's a social media post, it doesn't matter. You actually can create emotions with your language. And so choose language that will give the emotional response that you want. And that isn't a response of fear. Companies, we don't want our consumers feeling negative emotions while they're thinking about our brands. So choose that language that is going to give a positive emotional response. We also measure things differently. And I get it. I'm an ROI junkie. As I said, I wrote the book, How to Measure Social Media. I created digital measurement systems that are still employed today, both in software as well as from companies on all of the metrics that we can measure in online marketing. I tied it all back to you know, cost of goods sold. I tied it back to return on investment, to conversion rates, all of those things. 
And I'll say that all of those things are important because those are the, those are the metrics that keep us in business. But now we're adding some new metrics. And I have this picture of me and my daughter as an example of why you measure things differently. And now we're going to measure return on emotion, return on intention, and return on experience. Because if we can create positive emotions, if we can create positive intentions, if we can inspire humans to help other humans, if we can inspire humans to feel amazing about themselves and to understand that they are infinite and have infinite potential, and then we create experiences which prove that to them, then we are making a huge difference and a tangible impact on humanity and our planet within our lifetime. We are the change, you know, um, conscious marketers don't just talk about this stuff. We actually use our superpowers to give back to the world. I gave the example of myself. I donate healings every single month. I donate superhero play academies at events uh, every year. And the question is, how are you giving back? How is your company giving back? And how are you personally giving back? What is your personal area of focus where you feel inspired to help others and actually and actually be that change you know understand that this isn't about pretending to do something this isn't about just doing it for the sake of business and doing it for the sake of profit this is the one evolution that you can't fake you have to actually wake up to your true self and when you do that's when you'll be shown how you can actually help the collective and as I said, you are the message. We write every advertisement. We write every commercial. We write every TV show. We write every movie. We, write, we are in every song, every radio. We are the message. And the message that we've been sending is buy more now. And instead, I'm offering, what if we said that our, our responsibility is to inspire humanity to be the change they wish to see in the world, as Gandhi is so famous for saying. And by doing that, we become the example, and we are the change we wish to see. Our company is the change we wish to see, and therefore, we attract the consumer who is also the change they wish to see. So that's all I have for you guys today. Um, if you have any questions, you can contact me. And you can contact me at the con at consciousmarketinginstitute.com. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Released a podcast called. I'm Kelly. It was a uh, wonderful. Uh, uh, and you can listen in for more details. Presentation. <laughs>